You're listening to The Building Code. I'm Tom Houghton. I'm Paul Worth. And joining us today are brothers, Ben and Adam McKenzie, who are both engineers. They're both lead green associates and co-owners of Budget Blinds of Lincoln. And to keep going with this long list of greatness, they're both identical twins. And they're here in studio. And they're here in the studio. So we're trying to keep them straight. (laughs) Yeah. It's Adam and Ben. So why don't we, maybe Ben, introduce yourself first. That way people can hear. I don't know how they're going to be able to distinguish between you guys. Well, I can't. Yeah. I'm looking right at him. I can't distinguish. I I want, are our voices different? Or We'll find out. We'll find so, out. So, okay, yeah. this is Ben talking. Say hello, Ben. Yeah. Hello. And now Adam. Yeah. Hello. I mean, it sounded pretty similar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. There's a lot of twins in the world. This is not that unique. <laughs> a lot of twins in the construction space, like the Property Brothers. Yeah, there we, you go. Was, we were waiting for that one. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, you guys, you yeah. guys get, we get that. that a lot. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Good yeah. for you guys. Yeah. I may or may not have already had a question from somebody who saw me who were like, are the Property Brothers here? <laughs> no, not the Property Brothers. Next episode. Little Next teaser. Episode. There you go. Yeah. Ooh. Shout That'll out. be the intro. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's dive in. Uh, mm-hmm. Today, we're going to talk about a lot about home automation and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Home automation. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. It's good. It's here, but it's only just kind of scratching the surface, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. Adoption. Adoption. Yeah, the products are all there. People just yeah. got to start adopting this. Well, so. that's, not, that's not true, right? Like they've been kind of pieced together. Sure. Isn't that fair? Like the ding or the ring? <laughs> the ding. <laughs> the ding. That's such a better name. <laughs> so the ring, you know, you can buy that and then you buy your own like, and then you can like plug in your own sort of like automated like electrical lights. Sure. It all started with a clapper, obviously. The clapper. Yeah, um, very but, true. But so w- are we talking more about like this is your whole house system that somebody's going to do for you? That's, yeah. that's the next step, right? Yeah, that's and that's what we're proposing is coming to the market mm. is, you know, so far we have the people buy the Alexa dot and right. they'll say, hey, I automated my lights. I have an automated house. And we want to kind of rewrite that definition and say, no, true home automation is coming now. Um, you know, the prices are getting to the point where that's something that we can provide to basically every mid-market house in the country. What would you yeah. say true home automation looks like to you then? Let's maybe like define mm-hmm. that. I think a lot of that is what you interact with in your house. So um, the the ones we've seen already, and that you know there are certain technologies out there. You have your smart heating and air system, so a Nest or a you know smart mm-hmm. Honeywell sure. thermostat. Um, you have your smart lighting. Um, you see things like Philips Hue or mm-hmm. even IKEA has a smart lighting kit now. Yep. Um, and then also sounds. Um, Google I think has a audio system you can set up in your house, but um, Sonos speakers as well. Sure. Um, things like that are all. Um, I, I think those three things uh, light temperature and sound are the, the three things we're looking at automating and, and uh, bringing a better experience to people, to homeowners with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the difficulty is for a guy with my um, a level of technical knowledge is I don't want to learn three different things. Mm-hmm. That's a tough one for me. Like I, I have like a Wi-Fi HVAC something in my house, never touched it. Mm-hmm. Don't know how. Don't want to get into it, really. Right. I'd rather pay somebody, but then I don't want to do that either. <laughs> Sure. I think it kind of breaks down into two camps, depending on what devices you're using. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because like you mentioned, the categories, right? So you got heating, you got lighting, I'd say locks too, right? Security locks. Yeah, the ring doorbell, all that stuff. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. That's like uh, security for your house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all being automated. I think it kind of breaks down right now into two categories of, do you use Apple products or do you use Android products? Mm -hmm. Because of course, Google has the whole suite Mm -hmm. of their products. I, of course, uh, on the Apple side, know about that with HomeKit. That's their big tool to kind of take all of these different companies and put them under one umbrella to try to make that experience easier for the customer. So that way you can just say something like Siri set my temperature in the house to 72 degrees and she does it. That'd Mm -hmm. be easier on me. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that today. Yes. I I could. You could with an Ecobee. See, I don't know if we, I, I, we get, don't need to dive into, well, to, to, uh, to on, products, yeah, but yeah. let's take a step back mm-hmm. and first go back and introduce you guys. We just kind of dove right in the topic there cause we're so excited to talk about it, but give us a little bit more background on you guys and the company you work for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So first, thanks for having us in today. Um, so Adam and I both currently were consulting engineers in Kansas city. And then recently we became co-owners of budget blinds of Lincoln. 
Um, and so some history on budget blinds. Uh, nationally, it's the largest window blinds provider in the country. It means we have access to the largest, um, the largest manufacturers. We can get the best prices and best products. Um, and, but what's really excited us and why we decided to buy in this year was, um, some of their other partnerships. So with Sonos, if you're familiar with mm -hmm. sound, a smart mm -hmm. speaker company, yep. uh, and then also with Lutron and Lutron on the commercial side where our, most of our experience is, is, you know, they're one of the big players. They're one of the leaders in controlling your entire building. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm designing a hospital, I'd like Lutron to be controlling, um, the lights, the the technology in the building, the shades in the in all the patient rooms. Mm -hmm. So with Budget Blinds partnerships with them, it really brings an opportunity to bring to use some of that commercial experience to easily bring uh, home automation to the residential markets. Yeah. So, you, so you, like you said earlier, you're looking at that kind of every man or woman being able to do that in their house, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're doing a remodel or a, doing a new construction. Yeah. And our goal is to really be that one stop shop where um, we do it for you. You don't you don't want to be an expert. You don't have time to be an expert on those systems. So let it do. Let us set it up for you. Everything's going to talk together through you know what we call the hub, um, and then you control everything with your voice or through your app. And everyone's familiar with those. We like playing around with those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Yeah. So would you say your focus is more on the currently more on the residential side and and currently selling to like homeowners? Are you dealing with contractors wholesale that stuff? Yeah, um, nationally and historically, budget blinds has been, um, you know, going into people's homes, um, getting them one-on-one -on -one consultation and saying, hey, what kind of blinds, um, shades do you want in your house? And um, that is what the vast majority of franchises out there do. Um, but what we're really focusing on is going to home builders, developers, people like that, and kind of offering them, offering them that package of here is your home automation kit. Um, and, you know, I've... I'm a professional electrical engineer and I'd like to think I know a thing or two about lights and just some technology systems and buildings. But yeah, the hardest part about automating your home is, yeah, do I have an Apple phone or Android or, you know, what can work with what other systems? And it's, uh, it's complicated. And I think if we can come in and say, here's, you know, day one, you're building a house and, you know, you open your front door, walk in and everything's set up for you. Um, that's really the, uh, the end goal, I would say, mm -hmm. with what we're we're trying to do. So, mainly on the residential side, we do do uh, some commercial work, um, but I think the primary focus for now is residential um, construction. Sure, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel like we maybe talked about this before we got on air. I feel like you know, throughout the last five to ten years, we're kind of at a point where people might be more open for that budget line item when they're doing a remodel or a new mm -hmm. home. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't even know what it's going to cost, like anywhere from two, five, ten grand, probably, mm -hmm. right? The whole all in. So I think people are a little bit more open to that now. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's one central hub, as you said, like that's the other thing. You don't, yeah, like, it's got to be simple. Where mm -hmm. would the hardware be then for you guys in your scenario? Like, would it be a separate piece of hardware or mm -hmm. like, you, you know, those huge old like touch screens. remotes? Yeah. Or like, could you just do it on an iPad or a tablet? Yeah. And our goal is to have it through an iPad. So, whatever device you guys have in your house right now mm -hmm. is the same one we're tying into. And, uh, you know, I've seen the hub, like I said, um, it, what is the brain to your house with our system? Usually, you just sit that right next to your router. It plugs into the router and then it talks to the whole house and even the uh the dimmers that they make in some of the wall outlets that can control your smart lights um those are actually range extenders now so you know your whole house is talking to you know the brain the hub but you don't really know that's happening and that's our goal all of this is talking and you don't have to worry about it it's all set up everything is within range in your house and uh you know it works day one mm -hmm. yeah i like to say i'm a technology forefront you pioneer person yeah. right mm -hmm. uh, i mean so i've got hue lights in my home mm -hmm. we've got ecobee mm -hmm. we also have like a honeywell smart thermostat um that's a whole other story <laughs> on why we have both We've got a home pod. You have a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, that comes too, to pick you apparently, up. to yeah. come pick me up. Yeah. Smart yeah. locks. Um, I mean, I've kind of tried the whole gamut. And like I said, I'm managing it all through HomeKit right now. Mm -hmm. So I can ask Siri to do pretty much anything and she'll kind of figure it out through mm -hmm. the back end, um, which is great. But maybe you can share from the Lutron perspective what products it has and integrates with that you could potentially just bring this all under one brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And honestly, the way you framed it there is probably the most intimidating part about a home automation system is you, you know, you listed five brands right there. Sure. And you know, they can all talk to each other through HomeKit, but each one is set up a little bit differently. Each one has a little different, you know, user interface. Yep. Um, so our goal with Lutron is to bring it 
it, you know, all of your lighting in the house, the home, all of the sound in the home and all of the, uh, the shades in the home are controlled off of one system. So like you said, it all can get tied together back through home kit, but for the purpose of the system, you're only tying into one point. Sure. Yeah. That's smart. Historically, um, Apple and Lutron have been pretty strong partners. I think when they first announced the Apple watch, one of the mm -hmm. um, first apps on there for the home control side of things and home kit was Lutron. Yep. Um, I actually think it was the first app on the Apple watch. Was, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, I think that's a, you know, a good first step to say, Hey, there is some official support behind all this stuff. But yeah, with Lutron, uh, um, I think it's much more of a, a permanent solution versus kind of a, you know, go grab something at Best Buy and slap it on a wall somewhere. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, they do have hardwired dimmer switches and, um, on off switches, um, that are, you know, smart wall switches. So they're going back talking to that hub. Um, and they're, they're, um, with our our goal of bringing this as a you know almost a box you check when you're building a house um, that would be in your house day one in the wall so um, it's not just something that's you know stick or stuck on the wall uh, sure it's mm -hmm. it's in there the electrician when he's building your house would be putting that in so mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more um, permanent and in, in really ingrained in your house not just a yeah stuck on afterthought sure yeah, what are, what are like the, do you guys have any idea about what the dollars and cents would look like? Because it, it seems to me, obviously this is going to be an extra cost, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but because you, when you walk out, you can dim the lights at the right time and the heat and the air is super efficient and all the different things you guys just talked about. There's a, there's an element to efficiency there, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to cost. So is there any like numbers out there that you can just throw around? Like, yeah, one of the ones I hear most often um, from Lutron is that if you install just automated blinds, so this isn't talking about the smart HVAC system, just the automated blinds that you know you leave on a hot summer day, mm -hmm. they close. Um, if you leave on a cold winter day, they'll open and let some light and let some heat in. Um, that'll save you 10% a year just on the automated blinds. And while that's not a, hey, I'm gonna pay for this whole system just with this 10%, um, you know, it, it is leaning in the right direction. And now if you say my whole neighborhood was done with automated blinds, if we're reaching out to a builder, um, that whole neighborhood uses 10% less energy. So it, it's one of those things as you, as this technology grows, as it becomes commonplace, and that's one of the big um, points Adam and I try to make is this will be in every house that's every mid market home that's built in five or 10 years. This it's, it's a technology that's coming just because it's affordable and it's kind of that, it's the way to make your house a kind of a tech gadget. Sure. Um, so yeah, w when you look at just from a financial savings perspective, 10% is not huge, but it, it is a step in the right direction. And yeah, at least it's something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also a cool factor too. Yeah, that's true. You walk Definitely. in, you know, with a significant other and the blinds just open up and the yeah. music starts playing and the mm -hmm. lights dim. A little Barry Manilow on there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. You're saying significant S. <laughs> <laughs> Even if that's true. Yeah. But you know, yeah, there's some uh, there's some cool points there. Yeah, yeah there's a. Uh, That's how I look. <laughs> Lutron has some partnerships with um, uh, a handful of five star um, hotels across the country, and they have it set up in their system, and they've kind of standardized on a certain Lutron system. I sure. Guess. But they have it set up so once a, a customer or a, a guest checks in. Um, their profile pops up on the screen and it tags it to the room and, mm -hmm. and the um, heating and air system starts cooling or heating the room to a certain level. Um, the second you swipe your key at the, the door, open the door, the lights start to turn on, the windows, uh, the blinds open up. Um, so it's really about setting a, a, a scene and mm -hmm. that's a term used in the industry is sure. um, just really framing a picture, setting the stage for your experience in a room. Um, and you know, not everyone goes to five star hotels that, that have that technology, but um, something that's neat about Lutron and going back to Ben's example about hospitals earlier, um, they can really hit any project out there. Um, if you want to do a, a big hospital campus or a, you know, a college campus, or if you want to do a fancy hotel or just, um, you know, the, the average person's home, I think there's a, um, they have a product for, uh, every one of those scenarios. Mm -hmm. And if we trust this technology in a hospital, we trust it in our home too. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, getting back to what Adam said about the scene, that's such an important part of this is that 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 scene is what we're where we're tying everything together. So, and like you said, that the reason these hotels do it isn't so, you know, the blinds are open when you when you come in. It's so when you walk in, you're like, wow, this is cool. Um, and you know, the music comes on, the blinds open, lights turn on. Um, and it, from their end, it does it every single time, flawlessly every time a guest comes in. Mm -hmm. um, and it, that's why they did it. It's a differentiator. And there are developers in in Chicago. A, a tower went up recently where. Uh, it was a, a large condo right on the river and 
Lutron came in and provided one of these packages, uh, a home automation package to the developer. And the developer did it. They didn't do it just to save costs. They didn't do it to, uh, you know, have technology everywhere. It really was just to have a differentiator in their mm -hmm. building. So, um, and I guess that gets to the point where uh, one of the big things we've seen on the commercial side is just the progress of technology. Um, you know, how something starts on the commercial side and it always will find its way some in some form or another into the residential world. It's got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so typically we see that, let's say, a, a flagship NFL stadium. Sure. Um, one of those comes in, they want some flashy new technology. It's obscenely expensive, but someone uses it, someone buys it. And then from there, maybe it's a smaller college stadium, but they'll want that same technology because, hey, they used it in in the stadium a few yeah. years ago. So, you know, as more people start to adopt it, the prices come down. And then um, at, I'll use the uh, something we call a variable frequency drive in engineering as a as an example of this, or a VFD. So uh, this used to be a Cadillac option on a motor. Um, it, typically motors, they turn on, they turn off. Um, that's the end of it. But a VFD allows us to slowly modulate the speed of the motor to whatever we want to. So that lets us from the efficiency side, you know, really hone in our controls, really hone in um, how our systems work and the efficiencies of them. So um, that used to be this Cadillac option, but now it's pretty much the standard. The question usually comes up now, why aren't you using it mm -hmm. what, rather than why are you using it? So, um, you know, as those prices start to drop down, suddenly it hits that point where it's everyone, every building can afford it. Mm -hmm. um, and the big point is when codes adopt it. So once a code adopts it, everyone has to do it and it's standard. And this gets to the second point, which is kind of how technology has always progressed from the coast into the Midwest, always with everything we do in the building industry, this is how it works. Yeah, and just um, on the energy code side of things, every time you design a new building, build a new building, there are certain uh, requirements for you know, how efficient it is and sure. you know, mm -hmm. lighting and mechanical systems work. And um, I do some work in California and Washington on the, the coast and um, things there are you know, three, six, 10 plus years ahead of what we're seeing in the Midwest and what we're designing around. So. Um, a similar thing, you know, home automation and, and smart shades are, are big in certain areas of California. And um, I think that same mindset will trickle in with home automation technology to the Midwest. And there are plenty of people out there who are putting smart lights in their home and smart thermostats, all that. But again, I think we, we really just want to tie that all together into one point and um, just make homes a better, um, you know, better spaces for people to live and more enjoyable, cooler spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In terms of blinds, how many options do we do you have for these? Like, because I feel like mm -hmm. most automated blinds I see are just the roller kind. Yeah, is that kind of it? That's or? typically when we're talking automated blinds. That's what you're going to see. Okay. And um, one of the things I think that makes Lutron better, and some other blinds professionals might not agree with this, but um, when you look at some of the product books, you have hundreds of different colors and fabrics and shades and opacities and all that. And um, to me, if I was looking at a home, I wouldn't, of all the things you have to look at when you're building a home, that's not what I would have time to focus on. Um, so Lutrons, they do have a lot of customization, but they have a lot more a lot more kind of upfront standards that we would go to. And they're not selling based on the fabric like everyone else is. They're saying, hey, you're buying this because of the technology. You're buying this to make your house cool, to make it, to tie everything together. At yeah. the same time, they still mm -hmm. have a lot of different kinds of fabric and that can really, um, sway the price on a shade, um, mm -hmm. whether you want to go, you know, lower end, high end on, yeah. on if you want blackout shades, if you don't. Yeah, exactly. Um, but at the same time, some of the higher end Lutron systems, you can get, um, wood, um, shades that have motorized, you know, they can raise and lower, um, with a motor, but then they can also tilt, um, the, you know, the wood blind angle with a motor. So, sure. um, there's some pretty fancy stuff and you can combine those with a blackout shade. Um, it, it's really, whatever you want to do. Um, and I've, I've seen some higher end, you know, multi-million dollar homes that get very, you know, very fancy with it and they do some pretty cool stuff, but, um, yeah, there, there is a wide range of, of products with it. But I think Lutron on, on just the, you know, traditional, um, automated blinds in your average home, a lot of what you see is that, that roller shade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And again, they're selling points to technology. It's, uh, mm -hmm. There are controls technology or a controls company first, um, and you know the blinds technology. That's we perfected that stuff. We know how to do that. So let's focus on the technology. Sure. sure. Uh, so we talked also again about new construction. Obviously, that's the best time to kind of do all this mm -hmm. stuff, right? Because you have kind of complete control. How does this market play to? you know, aftermarket, after mm -hmm. build. The big difference there, other than having it ready day one, is if you're going to a renovation, uh, 
we go typically with a battery powered system just so you don't have to tear up the walls and put in new battery or new uh, power packs and wiring. Um, but I know batteries kind of scare a lot of people away, especially in a house, especially sure. if you're putting a blind 20 feet or 20 um, feet up in the air. But, uh, you know, we see five to 10 years to 12 years even with the batteries of life. So, um, and yeah, if you're looking at the new construction side, generally speaking, you're going to get hardwired power to it. So you don't have batteries, but, mm -hmm. um, even then with new construction, sometimes the, um, just with how the building's set up, you, you may want to do battery mm -hmm. um, operated or maybe in certain apartments, an owner would want to say, Hey, let's just do battery shades instead of the hardwired. Um, and it's just a little more versatile with, you know, having those options, I think it's easier to approach any situation out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Is there a cost break there too? I'm assuming that the battery ones are cheaper. The battery ones per shade are actually more expensive. Oh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just because there's, you know, a bit more on the like housing side. Sure. And, and what they have mm -hmm. to squeeze into the, uh, a small form factor. But, Makes sense. Um, you know, on the whole system, you with a battery shade, you don't have to go worry about wires and all that. So, um, yeah, it all it all somewhat evens out. There's a pretty big range that, that you can hit with that on the pricing side. Okay. This all kind of stems around the idea of building more sustainable, a sustainable future for us. You know, obviously mm -hmm. we're using less energy. Um, this is better for the planet. It's better for everybody. So Ben, mm -hmm. you kind of did this big project. Is that correct about sustainability? Yeah. So recently done in, um, well, I say recently, it's probably been 18 months now, but, uh, uh, in Kansas city, I was, or I am the sustainability chair of an organization called ASHRAE. And it's basically a huge HVAC engineering organization that, um, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of members and they, they dictate everything from, um, new sustainability codes to just the basic airflow codes in a building. So, um, every year they have two conferences, um, all across the country and some of those get up to 70, 80,000 people. So it's a huge amount of people that move across the country that fly put in hotels, take Ubers around, whatever. Um, so someone at some point said, Hey, we're ASHRAE, we're a sustainable, or, or we say we're a sustainable organization. Is this really a sustainable practice moving, uh, over a hundred thousand people a year between the two conferences around the country? Um, so what they started, they started a footprint project is what they call it. And they basically pro provide $20,000 for every host city of one of these, um, conferences. So, uh, Kansas city actually got one of the summer conferences this past summer. And with that, we had to put on a sustainability project, but I wanted to take it one step further and ask the question like, Hey, you give us $20,000, but are we actually making a difference? So that's when I reached out to K state, um, the architectural engineering program there. Um, and Julia Keen and her students did a great job on this, but they basically, they crunched a ton of numbers, ran a ton of data, built these huge spreadsheets, and then, you know, gave a number, quantified the carbon footprint of one of these conferences. You know, the number they came up with was a little bit sobering. Um, and I, that $20,000 doesn't really offset the carbon footprint of a conference at all. Um, but you know, we still did great work. We did, we installed, um, a lot of new sustainable or efficient systems for some low income families. Um, we got safer systems in there. They had stuff way behind code. Um, got some new water heaters, um, insulation kits, LEDs, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the, the big part of that was to answer the question like, Hey, conference center, the convention industry, um, causes there's a huge carbon footprint there and what can we actually do to fix that? So sure. there's still a lot of work to do with it. Are you looking, so in that, were you looking mm -hmm. at carbon offsetting like travel or was it just in terms of like actual attendance yeah. at the event? We actually tried to put it all together. So we, okay. you know, we brought everything in from uh, the plane, how far, how many total airline miles were traveled. Yep. Um, it, what does the hotel energy use look like? What does the actual conference center energy use look like. And, uh, it's, and, you know, we cut it pretty much there. We didn't get it into the weeds. We could have added a lot more to it, but, uh, those numbers add up quick for sure. Mm -hmm. What gets you into some super exciting stuff like, uh, electrical engineering and, and blinds. Mm -hmm. Actually, we've wanted to be building engineers since we were like eight years old. So as fun Same. as that sounds I think yeah. before yeah. that, yeah, yeah, I, uh, our mom has told us back when we were like two or three, we'd have her take us to construction sites and watch them build stuff, which, yeah. um, yeah. I am sure we thought that was the coolest thing in the world and she didn't, but yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, she obliged. She, she makes her she the best mom yeah, exactly. right there. Exactly. <laughs> Shout out mom. Way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually, you know, um, we find ourselves at the university of Nebraska, um, at the Omaha campus in the architectural engineering program there. Um, we got our master's through there and then moved down to Kansas city to st start our careers as uh, consulting engineers. So, um, and just through that, you know, I don't know how it came up. We were working on my brother and I on a research project with our firm down there. And, uh, it had to do exactly with what we're talking about now, which was automated shading. And like, how can we, 
um, you know, if we're talking about building codes, you have to prove something at some point. You have to say, hey, I'm not, it's not going to just save 10%. Let me show you how it's going to save 10%. Mm -hmm. So um, we did a research project on that. And then that just coincided with when the Lincoln franchise, the budget blinds went up for sale. Um, and Adam and I had talked about behind the scenes, you know, if, if, if an opportunity like that came up, I think we're at a position in our lives now where we could kind of bite that off and jump into it. So once that came up, we wanted to get into the family business. It made sense because now we have Omaha and Lincoln under one big umbrella. Um, and we just, we can, you know, share resources between the two cities now. Yeah. And a lot of it is, um, just with some of the, uh, partnerships that budget blinds has with Lutron and Sonos companies like that. Um, it, it's a really good Avenue for us to use some of our experience as uh, professional engineers and say, you know, how can we bring that expertise into the, the blinds industry and help, um, help homeowners get some some cooler technology in their homes mm -hmm. and that actually gets to how um i guess why we were on here we you know builder trend is always going after um the builders and the developers that are saying hey we know technology is going to be a part of the industry um it, you know that's you guys are a technology company mm -hmm. you know that, that's a great fit so when we're also making the claim hey technology is going to be a part of your home um in in the coming years that's that's going to explode everything is going to be automated so um you know we thought it, it was just i think that both the, of the companies can sort of see eye to eye on that where it's we both value technology and we know it's coming and we're building we're kind of hedging some of our bets on that so yeah. you know with that we also there was a podcast where we heard that you guys have the the line item when you put together a proposal your, your your builders can have a line item um you know the checkbox you want the granite countertops you want the hardwood floors and you know like we said earlier home automation will be on that checklist and yeah sure you know, coming yeah up, absolutely so. Yeah, this sense. it's not going. This stuff is not going away. Correct. You know, yeah. technology is just getting more and more ingrained mm -hmm. in our lives. So the yeah. sooner you jump on the train, mm -hmm. the more you enjoy the ride. Yeah, and that's that's where we're uh, that's where we're trying to find the builders who who also see eye to eye on that. So, um, you know, we want to be their partner with that. We know how to do it. So let us get that into your homes and let it let us make your homes cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think construction is one of those things where there aren't a lot of cool things, uh, but bringing technology into it, at least I think it's cool. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like in the Absolutely. street, the street of dreams program mm -hmm. that we have here in Omaha, I'm sure there's a, plenty of other, other mm -hmm. cities that have it as well. But, you know, I think one of the things I feel like I hear the most when people walk through those homes is like, did you see that home? It had, like you touched a button and everything changed in the mm -hmm. house. You know, like everybody's looking for that kind of like experience, right? Mm -hmm. That's what everybody wants. Uh, that's kind of ease of use, right? Mm -hmm. That's for what sure. all this is about. Yeah. It's cool Absolutely. and it can make your life easier. Like Adam said, if you wake up in the morning, your blinds open, your lights come on, like that can make your morning easier. So, yeah. um, as long as there's a snooze button on that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or maybe that's well the end of the snooze. Take button. it back down. Yeah. Just Take kidding. it back. Not down. ready yet. Not give ready. Me, give me ten more minutes. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, That's thank you true. guys for coming on the podcast today mm -hmm. and sharing your uh, industry knowledge and experience. We really appreciate it. If you have questions, feel free to reach out on to the podcast hotline. Oh yeah, they have a podcast hotline. <laughs> why do you keep forgetting that? Because <laughs> we haven't used it yet. That's why. Well, you need to call in. Yeah, we need questions. Call in, and you can ask questions about home automation. Uh, feel free to reach out to us either on our email as well, podcast at buildertrend dot com. If you've got a question for Ben or Adam, we'll we'll make sure we get it to them and. Uh, check out the show notes page for all those fun details of everything we talked about today. But Ben and Adam, thank you guys for joining us on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thanks thank so much for guys. having us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Want to share a suggestion for a future guest? Have a question about Trend that you'd like us to discuss or a topic that you'd want us to cover on the podcast? Let us know by calling and leaving us a message at 402-596-6437. That's 402-596-6437. And who knows, you'll maybe hear yourself on the podcast. Love what you heard? Don't forget to rate and subscribe to our podcast so you can hear from more guests that will benefit your business. Also, please check out our show notes page for more information on what we discussed on this episode. You can find it at buildertrend.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on The Building Code. Appreciate you.